Good afternoon, ladies and G and Tormen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything and amazing propaganda cast with your host of Pearl Dane, the one, the only master propaganda he loves like defender of the fatherland off here to our 1v1 own. You guessed it, it is Mill Road again, but this time it's with Cheats and Katze versus Lovnest fighting for the Wehrmacht, the German army, Deutschland. Here sitting out, out my back, uh, with the... Ninth Panzer shown here, spearhead, John McKinnis, and she so specifically my shoulder a bit. Uh, in the northeast, it is Chief Sun Carter fighting here for the British Empire, the Commonwealth. Taking on the role here of the 51st Infantry Division. Uh, we got here Vanguard, we got Advanced Emplacements, and we got Mobile Assault. So, after the races, we are here with Labnist in the south. Chiefs and Cats North going to need a sniper start versus triple section start. Also, a big hearty thanks for my patron supporters and their valuable support. Helps, helps keep the Fabulous Cats running. So, big thanks for all those. Other people in your ranks by Patreon and Patreon. I'll find the link in the description. Anyways, back to the fight here. we got the section about here for Chiefs and Cats up north. They're heading northwards as well. Certainly, these kind of starts for their marked or any sniper start tend to have a bit of risk involved because they do mean due to the snipers a high cost but also long build time that you risk falling behind and macron so your opponent is like chiefs and cuts are doing going hard on infantry there are risk associated this is why folks must see some Wehrmacht players that will go for awesome doctrines because they can just use the awesome to just quickly catch up because they're cheap and they're quick to deploy so can that way help mitigate a bit the sniper opening here in this case, this is not always seeing helps. Obviously, Lavin is going for just regular Gunnies here versus Chief Sun Carter, hoping he can just turn the tide here, of course, with the power of the sniper. So, we will see if uh, Lavin can do that. We got a fourth section of Chief Sun Carter heading off to the Pioneer there. Far southeast section creeping up there on that point here. First engagement here, we got the Gunnies occupying the shed. Second spotted and getting shot at. So, now we're pulling up here, staying a nice, respectful distance of British marksmanship. And there you go. First casualty of this fight is poor Tommy Johnson from Newcastle. Pioneers for the section up here and grab supplies. They are a bit more boosted up there. Section is the gun it is here, continuing pursuit of the sniper's role here. We could see Jason Katz is trying to buy time, I suppose, here. But yeah, against the gun it is caught backed up a sniper, there's only so much time you can buy. Up northwest here, Pioneers being rushed by the second, we're taking two losses here. It's now going to try and help get you know, a bleed out the Englishmen there, not quite working out. Section retreating, unsurprisingly, got a fourth section. So, Chiefs and Cards are just going hard in infantry, which, again, it's not necessarily a bad choice. He allows more map control and pressure, as long as Lovness doesn't get up a machine gun or something like that. So, we got more gunners here for Lovness. In the southeast section, we up here for Cheese Turn Cards. Here's the section up here. So now I'm falling back here a bit. Skirmishing up here. And there it goes, sniping pursuit by the infantry sections. While good at bleeding out infantry, sniper can still be somewhat vulnerable, and particularly it's the British infantry they're sort of running into. Still lavish rushing troops to hit the sniper safe while course pulling the sniper back. Not a heart retreat there, mind you. He's hoping, you know, Chiefs and Cats gets bored or concerned and keeps up the stops the pursuit, at which point Lavins can quickly have the sniper just, you know, pop back and fire at them again. But Chiefs and Cats is clearly not falling for that. But I'll take the car point here, keep up good pressure on Lavinus and the Germans. There you go, sneak him up here, and now falls on the sniper to retreat here. Will Lavinus go for another gun to escort? Will he tag out? Well, we'll find in a few moments. Section there, pushed away. But not before again denying Lavnest precious resource here. And the section keeps hung around the corner here. Interesting move here by Chisun Katz, but ultimately has to give up on that. And now Lavnest does go for an MD42, realizing that with the way Chisun Katz is currently reacting to a sniper, you know, he's going to need a machine gun. Otherwise, those sections are just going to run down the sniper and shoot him, obviously. Uh, take the other way for Chisun Katz at the AC Mark 3. Obviously. In part to help deal with any two to twos and part to pressure the sniper further. Also, fun fact about snipers, no one really liked them in the war. You know, basically, if you were a sniper, you got caught, chances are they just shoot you. Like, that's typically what happened. Because people really did not like the snipers. That and flame for operators. If you're any of those two, chances are if you got caught, you'd get shot. And they just wouldn't care about the whole war crimes aspect of it. They just really hated those types of people. Hell, even people suspected of being snipers would get shot. The Americans, that one, that one apparently a lot. They were the Germans, they caught behind lines because they got caught up during the retreat and so assumed them to be snipers. So, 
Holding up PAC Mark III there for Chief Sun Katsa. Going into the section in the west. Machining about holding up into the shit, forming up a small stronghold of the ninth punch of his shoulder here. Going to use the section there. Bit of skirmishing here, snapping up here with the scope to give air 43. Which apparently wasn't that popular of a sniper rifle though. It was more the Karnak TK or captured examples of the most Gun that popular with German snipers. Fun fact there. EC Mark III though. Halfway done here for Chief Sun Kata, going to be swarmed by the section in the south here. No upgrades yet here for Chief Sun Kata, it's finally going for like infantry heavy approach here. We're not seeing any grenades, re weapon racks, or bolstered squads here. But we do get mobile assault and we do get the assault sappers here. And again, I know the name says otherwise, but you got a unit with flamethrowers, smoke grenades, and they're just five guys with submachine guns. The only thing they're here to recover. It's like an excuse, basically, for having all of that stuff there. So now there was a section. Loveness there's teched up, bankrupt there. And we got the AC Mark III out here for Chief Tenkatsu, one of the heavy armoured cars of the war, and was apparently based off a heavy truck. Fun fact. So that said, it wasn't, you know, a novel concept to base an armoured car for civilian design. The Germans did that with the several of their early light vehicles well utility designs in a sense more that you know not necessarily civilian but you know not shooty shooty bang bang stuff like tractors for example or just cars meant for like you know doing other stuff were up armored and turned into like other armored cars or armored half tracks so anyways clearing out the barbed wire here with a bit of explosives ac roaming about here Troops enforcing healing there, like to make a nice company up. I imagine a pack for up here with the AC Mark III here under Chief Sun Katz's command. So far, a nice bit of back and forth between Loveness and Chief Sun Katz. Gun is running up north here, being shot at by those sneaky Englishmen. So I'm probably up there, got mine swabs up because a telemine from Loveness, of course, could quickly derail any plan here for Chief Sun Katz and that AC Mark III. So getting out some mine sweepers is, of course, a very smart move there. Thumbs up, pack 40 for loudness, as expected, the Panzer out there can only feel sick. It's now rowing about here, and he's about here as well. MG42 there on the way for loudness, Grenadiers. Quick shot there from the AC, kills Otto. We shouldn't give it around the center up north here, we got the Grenadiers here, the Sappers. Or we're getting one kill in here. Not looking great for the Saps, which is they do have a Minesweeper, so that does mean that some of their stuff is not great. But there we go, just ruining their cover. Cheeky cheese tongue cuts up. The, the South Eagle is spotting the Pioneers, ruining, or at least attempting to deny Sam Bart while he, or Sam here to uh, cheese tongue cuts it. So there you go, pack 40 ready. Hunter up there, Kononi Fjertzik, which had a small, neat little trick they actually did there to keep the weight down of the gun shield. Basically, rather than just one big slab of steel, they actually went for two smaller sheets and sort of had them on top of each other. That way, there was a bit of a gap between them, which actually provided quite as amount of effective protection, it would appear. While also, again, allowing them to have it just lighter. That said, it didn't provide a lot of protection directly for the crew, but, you know, for the gun itself. So, little fun fact there. Grand Northern Point here, bit advancing as well if it cheese and cuts up north. You see running forwards. Far up north and northern fields are updated here. Dying Chiefs and Katz's men could also control in a infiltration commander squad here with a silent stand guns. We'll of course have to see if this is something Chiefs and Katz does, but most players in my experience tend to like them a lot. Unless of course the ones up against them, in which case they hate them. Smoke deployed here, nice use there on buying Chiefs and Katsu, thumbs up. Bit use the smoke flare there. That set, German troops arriving here to put pressure on the Englishmen anyway, so almost got the northern victory point, but moved a bit too fast here. It's now moving in there, 10 kills, veterans you want. AC being fixed up here. We do have both sections up here for Chiefs and Katsu, that's of course going to be a, well, Big boost to the infantry, a bit of bolstering there. For five man squads, it's going to be a bit of a tougher task here for Lovner's Gunners to handle with. Particularly if they do not have light machine guns. Machine and Elton trouble here. 
Pat calling away, they got the start flying away, they're home to get a few kills in there for Deutschland. Gun is moving in then, Zadness remains a bit uh, acutely short ammunition for more light machine guns, so in this regard, again, four bolted sections is a particular problem here for Lavnist. We'll have to see how it deals with this. Still no commander there for Lavnist. I mean, there's certainly some interesting picks. I mean, to achieve reserves for the Pentafor model here could be quite handy, for example. Could also go on for like some assault good ideas earlier. Spear, I suppose, is a nice classic. And Mechanize is also as well. But so far, Lavnist hasn't really picked anything, so it's hard to say exactly what he's scheming there. Pioneer's being shot by the AC. And there we go. As expected, we do get the infiltration commanders. Funny enough, after they move down to three man squads, most people never infiltrate with them, they just call them off from, you know, just there and, you know, reinforce the map. Little fun sight, no, they? Because it turns out these guys infiltrating uh, was a bit much. Tell them their spot, but again, highlights this is as he. This, necessity of having minesweepers out there. Magnet easy to hit that. That been a big win for Lapnus and a not so great development here for Chiefs and Gadza. Playing up more terrain here. Quite eager in using the destroyed cover ability. Trying to remove as many possible hard points here for Lavinus Infantry to hide behind. Very sensible, of course. There we go. We do get a command here for Lavinus. It is in the end Spearhead. A classic. Mortar half tracks, Pansec Tactician. Reconnaissance Overflight, Fragmentation Bombs, and of course, the Tiger Tank. Horseman healing here. We got the Commander's Wing Head here with their silenced Sten Guns. Which, while here depicted as being an automatic weapon, was actually fully semi-automatic. Because, basically, otherwise they burn through the silencer if it went fully automatic. So, armorers who, you know, set them up there would basically just disable the automatic feature on that one. Fun fact. Honey's round here, but the commanders, though. Rifling it off here, section dodging it. Northly got the second quarter going to these as well. MD4 tilting up here by the Western Victory Point. Section's about to get annihilated. We got the commanders holding up here for Chiefs and Kudza. And the toast track called in here. Chiefs and Kudza's had enough. Gonna flatten that house. Sir, it's just a small wooden house just reported as being a massive German armored bunker with the words Churchill is fat written on it. That'll get it leveled fast. AC Mark 3 heading north for Team Machine up there by the northern point in the south. -y. Commandos creeping up here for Chiefs 10 cards. It's a Palmer Court almost down here. Strain to the MD42 with the MD AC Mark 3, and of course, the MD42 has very much just get the devil out of there. Love is closing in on the Panther 4 again. Could have gone for strategic reserves here, maybe gone for Panther 4 Model J, which in game would certainly offer a bit more. A threat here to Chiefs and Katsu. I imagine he probably wants to go for the Tiger Tank and not the Tiger Ace. In the longer run. Other way, those seconds away from the Panda 4. Chiefs and Katsu, though, has yet to take up and so isn't quite within range of a fast tank, that's for sure. Now you go, Lovness can now go for the Panzer Kampfwagen Fear. He just needs to press the button. The button, Lovness. Press it. It's now falling back here. 18 kills, Veteran 2. Commandos keeping forward here steadily and again. Looking to just hide them out as much as possible. Obviously A for the big surprise, but also means the sniper can't just more and pick them off. The other currency for Lovnist. Thumbs up. Probably also another reason he went for this Oistrich oh, Reserves. They're definitely a certain set of players that really, really like seeing what their opponent is up to. In this regard, Recon Zoflight is for players like that a really valuable ability. Can't blame them either. But again, some players weight this one more than, you know, other things, for example. Which is one of the reasons why Spearhead is fairly popular, because again, those players really like having access. It's also why, for example, they have Mechanized and such like that, because I think Mechanized, no, it's Blitzkrieg. Again, air reconnaissance, plus other things that are handy. Mechanizer has spotting scopes, which is again, also popular. Panther 4 ready here, got the pack for ready there for Loveness as well. A second one, clearly starting to get concerned about Chiefs and Katsun armor. Probably starting to be concerned that Chiefs and Katsun might be planning a comet here. 
Pen rolling handy commanders will find that while they can hide from the guns, they cannot wait hide from the weight of the tank. So, you know, they need to get out of there before it just runs over the bushes. They're hiding behind. Six pulling on there for Chiefs and Kadza. A well sensible response to his arrival on the Pantophobia. Got the company command post got for Chiefs and Kadza, so. I would not be surprised if this ends up being a common move here for Chiefs and Kadza. Chiefs and Kadza does favor the comet. There's a tank here, but who knows, maybe Chiefs and Kata wants to go for Crummel first and respond to the Panther away from Loveness. We'll have to see, but I would also not be surprised at all if he did go for it. But there you go, we do get the Crummel here first. Up north here, point to grab the gun. Do you see Crummel almost done? Mine goes off there, killing some machine gun crewmen. Good there for Chiefs and Kata. Less of Loveness. British Gambit South here, Panther forwards. Bit more pressure north, it's also not a bad idea. Pack 4 to get a good hit in the EC. Pantafall's almost got it here. No smoke being deployed here, I was kind of expecting that. Okay, now we do get the smoke, but it might prove to be a bit too late. No except it turns out it wasn't. Close call there, though, for Chiefs and Katz's armored car. Crumlin's almost done up north here. Section swarming alone, gun deer squad here. Even with a light machine gun at these ranges, the triple section with five men will absolutely, you know, rip them apart. Lovins, of course, seeing this, retreats immediately. Upon the realization, of course. Panda 4, they're falling back here. Lightly damaged, but, you know, one mistake you could cause loveness is Panda 4. Up north, Gunnies with the advancing sections. Chiefs and Katz's blood was been a bit more, so you can't fix something to get support from the other section there. But even then, not quite enough cover and still significantly outgunned. The only way, again, this could have been worse for loveness if they also equipped with Bren guns. Fortunately, though, Chiefs and Cards, despite having a ample supply of munitions, has not really made any moves towards utilizing them. Like, we're not seeing any mines, for example. We're not seeing any Bren guns either, nor are we seeing any grenades. So, definitely think there's an argument here for Chiefs and Cards to, like, investing into something that allowed to use the munitions besides, you know, like gamma bombs. Again, hitting the fuel point there. Love has been the pressure. His economy is being hurt here by Chiefs and Kata and the British forces here. Machining going at the center in the northwest here. Section finally pushed off, but not before the damage has been done. And the fuel point has been rendered neutral. Sniper there with 22 kills. Six Pentagon almost done there for Chiefs and Kata. Cancel in favor of the Cromwell. Still no sign of any way to make use of all these munitions. Like, Chiefs and Kaz has got like a fair amount of them by now. Armor counting quite a few hits here. Flows to Vetching 2 though. Loudness launching a fresh wave of troops into the west side to reclaim here. Even in the southeast, Chiefs and Kaz is slowly moving ahead here. Pants are moving up there. Again. That said, it's a fair bit damaged here, so we need to be more careful, particularly the EC. It could risk, you know, its threats being targeted, getting immobilized, and then knocked out by the British. So, definitely should pull that one back for repairs. It's also at this point, love this. Yeah, definitely, there we go. Should go for second Pioneer Squad, just as I was saying there. So, can that way expedite repairs? Oh, nice ambush here by Chiefs and Cuts and Lovens. They're hitting the Gunners with a light gun bomb, and then looking to finish more for the Sten Guns. In this case, the Fortune did smell a bit unlovenest. That could have been a lot worse for him. North here, fresh wave of troops. But again, still worth noting, we're not really seeing any sound of upgrades here for Chiefs and Katsu. No grenades, no weapon racks. And again, five-man squads are just very good on their own. But, you know, there's certainly the argument they could be better. South here, armored car. They're clashing a bit with the pack forward and the snipers. Up north here, section of the Gunnadiers here. Tearing into them there with the full fury of the British Empire. From there at the ready, AC falling back. Commanders moving forwards. Silence then guns at the ready. It's now moving in. There we go. Weapon racks being unlocked. Second Panther for Lovenist and the German army. 
So, steady progression here. Well, I'm perceived Chiefs and Castle now decides to go for the Comet. Or they're going to go for another Cromwell here. Meanwhile, of course, weapon action lock means eat a lot of Bren guns now, possibly, for Chiefs and Cancer. And we got four sections plus the commandos. That's a total of five infantry squads that can be equipped with a large number of Bren guns. This is also called a problem for German infantry and support weapons. These 40 for Loveness right now, they're not being handed out like they can. These Pioneer squad locked out. That's another blow. That's a Loveness. Definitely another problem. Second Pantafel's almost down there. Pioneer's right there. Section again could start grabbing those Bren guns. Between 69 and 32. Promoting it from the packs and the Panzers. Almost took it out there, in fact. Close call. Bit of target threat. They're slowing down the Pantafel briefly. North here. Bit of dancing about. Okay, moves out. Guess it's just more priority just grabbing stuff rather than, you know, getting the troops to the front rather than grabbing guns. Can't fault Chieftain Cuts there with the current amount of pressure from Loveness, but at the same time, I do think long term there's going to be some benefits to Chieftain Cuts and getting those Bren guns out to the men. They seem to have the pack 40 here, Pant forming as well here. Loveness sees some opportunity, and again, partly thanks to Eric Cons. Again, he knows how Chieftain Cuts is sort of set up so he can actually exploit that more intelligently thanks to that knowledge. In this case, ends up backing a bit off. Chiefs so, and Cousins, if there's definitely taking a few fair beatings here, heavily depleted. Again, could start handing out Ren guns to them. Particularly, the commanders are a unit people have handy of, of fond of keeping Ren guns because they do get bonuses with them and they can fire them on the move. So. There we go. Particular commanders do tend to be big targets of Bren guns. It's not in this case, though. Chiefs and Cats equips everyone but the commanders with Bren guns. I mean, I imagine the commanders will receive some Bren guns down the road. So clearly, Chiefs and Cats prioritize the infantry sections. Oh, wait. That is a lot of Bren guns. That is a lot of Bren guns and will be quite the surge of firepower here that Lavin suddenly has to deal with. Six and imagine at least some of them have been equipped with the two set of Bren guns. Yep, there you go. That's one. Two. I think that one has only one. No, oh, that's also got two. I think they've pretty much all got two Bren guns. Just the commanders need Bren guns now. So, again, going to be a bit uncomfortable there for Lovner's infantry and support weapons. Obviously not so much for the Panzer Fours. This definitely gives uh, Chiefs and Cats a significant firepower boost. And this is going to be a further problem because Lovness only really got three Grenadier kind of squadrons, then again, five squads of infantry, one of which is the commanders, and the other, again, heavily upgraded Bren sections. Definitely a bit of a challenge here, Pantor being fixed up. As for Loveness, we'll obviously goes for next. Chiefs and Cats here. Definitely expecting it's going to be a. Uh, Comet next. Oh, actually, land matches. But I imagine a comet's next. It's going to be sort of his next big goal here. And land matches can certainly only add further pressure here to Loveness. Make it hard for him to defend here. And there you go. Bren sections are just shredding the pack crew here. Mercilessly punishing Loveness. I believe his pack 40 is exposed as that. And keeps up the pressure here with the Bren sections. They are taking a fair amount of damage here from Loveness. Panzers and whatnot. But he's definitely getting some damage. And there you go. Clearing up more terrain here. And making it harder again for Loveness to sort of just hide behind the shot blockers here in the terrain. Cromwell AC going up and going to destroy that pack 40 denying it to Loveness. That's going to be another problem here for Loveness. Casualties there do force Chiefs Khan to pull back some of his troops. But even then the damage to Loveness has been quite aggressively done here. Didn't get the pack 40 though. That's a bit lucky here for Loveness. Well, spoke too soon there. Spoke too soon. Who's back for reinforcement healing? South still got a few section members in the command here versus one panda four. They're lacking any anti tank firepower. They will have to withdraw or die. Land matches bounce off against the panda four. Probably more to push back any supporting troops. Now they almost got caught in that actually. Loudness launching a small counter attack in the center, I think, just to push Chiefs and Cards a bit further back here, giving Loudness some more room. It's going to need to replace those Pioneers because now it's got, like, you know, like he lost earlier, 
two fairly damaged Panda 4s and only one Pioneer score. That is going to be very difficult for Loveness to get fixed up quickly, otherwise just one Pioneer squad. Got a massive set of brain section there, pushing 40 for Chiefs and Cuts and the British Army back here, reinforcing healing. Nice shooting there. And of all the achieving veterans, he too shuts and at it. Commander swing forwards. Now to you. Four here for loudness. That probably indicates he's going to try and hold up for Tiger Tank now here versus Chief Sun Katsu. Back here for Chief Sun Katsu. Not much else going on. And again, I'm expecting this is going to be hammered into a comet soon ish. So again, the infantry is bleeding quite harshly, so. That does delay their Chiefs and Cutters plan for in like little bigger British tanks. They need to catch them in the section there. Laying down sandbags of all things, so that means they could actually respond to easily. But we got the crumb responding to this a German intrusion. Loudness is finally bringing in more pioneers. Thumbs up to that. Fun fact about the Panther 4 when it hit armored sides, because apparently it was fairly commonly mistaken for a tiger tank. Which caused the Allies to report, you know, for example, normally a lot more Tigers destroyed than actually were. So, little fun fact there. We're ready for from the game, the gun it is. Sarsat like gunners holding up here. Good shot from the pack forward in the crumble. Gun it is squad white. That's quite painful there for Lovelace. Leaves you have the two gun it is squads on the gate an opponent with five squads of infantry. That is quite a gap there, honestly, and could get a bit dangerous for Loveness if this keeps up for too long. I imagine for now Loveness is probably betting on the Tiger tank solving this issue by blowing up British infantry. But there you go. In the end, we do get hammer attacks here for Chief Sun Carter, and that will very likely mean a comet in the near future. South Hick on his best ground points away here from Chief Sun Carter. We got 338 plus 215. Land matches they're firing off another barrage. Sniper Queen about here, 35 kills, right in your feet. Grab the southern point there, Panda 4 being fixed up there. So, Lovelace is not too far away from the Tiger Tank now. Admittedly, now there's she sent cuts from the Comet. Small scale assault hits all running to issue. See, eleven is Panther Fogan and Easy are providing enough persistence here that Chiefs and Cutters need to bring in more guns or back off. And it does appear that Chiefs and Cutters sides on, you know, the bring in more guns option. Not that I blame him. I mean, we're going to cut shooting about here. I think partly to act as like spotters in case like Lovness brings in more reinforcement from his base here. And also fit into a cheap path here. Oh, the way the Lavenous response is actually just concede these instead push hard west instead here. So that's an interesting direction taking there. We also got a bit of salvaging here. Actually, you know, doing the whole salvage part. Which is, most players never use them for that. Again, they're five man submachine gun squad with smoke grenades and flamethrowers. You know. Up north here, points being grabbed. Lavenous very close to the Tiger Tank here. Well, about half a minute actually here. And that Tiger Tank is going to pop out. In Mold Cheese Sun Cuts, it's easily got the feel for the Comet, but the manpower is definitely where things are squeezing him a bit here. And where he's going to have to, like, you know, be a bit more conservative. We're losing a capture point. At least, you know, try and avoid running into, like, enemy gun lines. There we go, though. Loveness is on the fourth here. The Tiger Tank from the Schwerer Pantabteilung 5501. Change is being dark there. Going forward for that one. Adding a pen my machine. That means Loveness is three tanks versus Chiefs and Cats is one. Plus, there's only one six pounder gun. Though there are Piets and some, of course, some anti tank grenades. It's not like Chiefs and Cats is completely exposed, but Loveness definitely will. Two Panda Falls and a Tiger Tank is holding some rather significant cards in his hand. So can Lovness to really utilize them? I mean, he's got air with cards really telling his opponent doesn't have a lot of ways of defending himself against this. So I definitely say this is where Lovness, like, you know, needs to like start hitting Chiefs and Katsu. 
for Chis and Carter brings up too many things to like put a stop to this. Panther blitzing against the anti tank and very good here. Emo target tank Panther blasting against the trench unit here. He is moving up against the Panther, no supporting infantry because in part Lumnus doesn't enough infantry supporting. And of course the argument here is you could act. I'm not entirely sure why he's like doing this when he's prioritizing A, the anti tank, but also like you know the sapper. So tactically here, Lumnus actually kind of makes a mistake. Because again, he had like a tight tank and a Panther 4 fine and a unit in a trench instead of like, you know, bigger priority types like the six pounding gun or the Cromwell or anything like that. So while technically they won the engagement, it cost them about two Panther 4 and again, it crucially it bought Chiefs and Cats a precious time to bring in the Comet here. So again, tactically, Lubner's kind of whiffed there a bit. Like there was no real need for them to shoot at it. Again, it was a nice safe target, but like, you know, Wrecking the entertainment in there would have been much more important for Lovenist and also crucial would probably save that Panzer IV. So, I definitely think that was a bit of a tactical slip up there by Lovenist and could be proved to be crucial here for Chiefs and Katsu because, again, suddenly, boom, Lovenist arm advantage, not quite as big. And crucially, again, Chiefs and Katsu can soon bring in their comet, at which point things are going to get tougher for Lovenist. Titan sending out tier 3 kills, half eight of veterans run roughly. Comet almost done there. And there go more trenches. Grab the southern point. Titan shoots and kind of puts a stop to that. Finally, Lovin's bring up more grenadiers here. So that was another issue with the attack, which is not a lot of infant support to either assist either. That would also I think make that attack much more impactful if Lovin's had had sufficient infantry. More trenches here. Up north, they point being grabbed in the 5th of 42. May not quite succeed though. Panther 4 push back. Tiger tank being repaired here. Got the Bren commanders numbering 40, 6 kills. Slowly approaching Metsony 3. There we go. Good shot on the 6 pounder gun crew here. Pine Gunnies with the commandos. Almost got the 6 pounder gun. Lovin should definitely go for it, I think, here. Smoke the plot of the cro a Comet. Thumbs up there to Chiefs and Katze. Nice use of the smoke shell ability there. Tide Tank is very close to one. Chiefs and Cuts is just one at six pounds a bit further away here. And for Tide Tank moving up here. Good shot there. Veterans on the Tiger Tank. Tiger Tank kick, yup. Nice flank here by Chi Sun Katsu. Lovness definitely again slipped up there, and Chi Sun Katsu absolutely punched. Also, crucially, the six pounder gun at that point, I think, was a slip, so that really good penetration. Further, you know, uh, cutting through the Tiger Tank's armor. So, Lovness there, again, kind of punished for like, not prioritizing that into tank gun much earlier. In fact, I typically find as a priority, you really want to destroy into tank guns during any engagement once they're there. So, Lovness really got punished here now. It's starting to become problematic for Lovness because now Chiefs Katsu definitely has the arm advantage with a Comet and a Cromwell. Lovness only got one Panther, though, of course, he does have an Ace Pack 40 here. But it's quickly weaving out here now because, of course, got the massive infantry advantage. Further becoming a problem here for Lovness because the Pack 40 is also in deep, deep sour crowd here. Panther is being hauled out of there. Veggie 2, though, looks like he does escape and so does the Pack crew. But this has been a really rough scissor engage now for Lovness. Chiefs and Katsu still has five squads of infantry. He has two tanks and he's got most of the map. So definitely a rough ride here for Lumnus and the German Panzerwaffe. So I'm just going to have to do some pretty heavy lifting here versus uh, Chiefs and Katsu now if he wants a chance. And it's certainly not going to be easy. He's going to need more Panther Fours. But I think he's also going to need some stooks to like really challenge that armor there. Also, I think that Lovness could benefit from now, could also benefit from sooner, would have been some mortars, and certainly Chiefs and Katsu could also benefit a bit, but he does have the land mattress, so there's less need for mortar now, obviously. But for Lovness, some mortars, maybe a mortar have to get some point, could actually be quite a handy addition there, a bit of light actually it always does wonders. Common there being fixed up. Got more salt sappers out, obviously to help repair all of this armor that Chiefs and Cuts is possession of. So smart move there, thumbs up. Arguably cut it out sooner, but you know, better late than never. Of course, Chiefs and Cuts also has 
vehicle crew repairs, but this of course means you can use munitions for other things as well. Plus, you know, again, more assault sappers, maybe this time with flamethrowers, is also pretty good, honestly. Command is about to get run in by the Panther 4 here. Put your horn out in the face of the advancing Panzer Kampfag here from Lurvnest, and there we go, good shot there. South Heap, Pioneer of the sections. Commanders round it. Holding up here. Just bringing out there in the south, you got the coming forwards. Better repositioning here, Pantafall as well. I think Ludden is actually trying to hold out for another Tiger Tank here, which means she's in cut to me while she's small time to bring on more stuff, like maybe another Comet. Definitely pretty risky for Ludenist. Definitely pretty risky. Shot bounced here. And another land match is about here from Chiefs and Cats against the Love Nest. Another deadly rain of rocketry here unleashed upon the position of the 9th Panzer to be shown. 7th Panzer Gunnadier Company. We've got the crumbling up. Engaging the Gunnadiers here. Far south east section laying up. Further south here. Going for that section here by the southern nation point. Bit of a minute away from another tiger tank here, but again with that same time span time span, maybe she's can catch and bring another tank though. He doesn't have enough population, so probably not. And he's being had here, there are easy targets of the Cromwell. Try and take out the anti tank crew here, but falling a bit short in the south, Pantwell's the section. East pack 40 holding forts up north here. Love and assault makes some nice progress there now against Chiefs and Cats, at least a bit there. Big two points wise. It's also crucial to note here. Lovna still has the advantage there, so. There we go. Nice tackling with the Cromwell. Not enough to finish it off, of course, but you know. Probably enough to keep Chiefs and Cards perhaps a bit more careful with it. There you go. The Brent Gunners here immediately falling upon the pack crew here. Almost swapping out here. That's only be painful for Lovna to use an ace pack crew. Again, high rate of far higher penetration. These kind of crews here makes them quite valuable. So in your crew the gun, like just the loss of that experience can be quite painful for you. And of course, which is why they're great things to just get wiped. You're up against that. But of course, the primary takes are like to get to destroy them, but like, you know, even if you can't destroy them, just wiping that veteran so can still do a lot for you, in my experience. And there you go, Lovness with a fresh tiger tank out here. It's the second tiger tank at least against the British. Section being murdered out. North East Commodus the Punila, routing them quite swiftly and mercilessly. There we go, second Tiger tank, moving to the front line. Gammon bomb there, it's got a wipe here. Cheeky cheese and cuts up, but quite effective obviously. Another blow there to Lovnest, and certainly only adds his problems. There you go, Commandos there ambushing the gun, is the crew out on the center victory point here. Plus five from the Comet makes this a pretty tough engagement for Lovnest Gunners. All the, you know, craters, they do provide a bit of support here. And we got the Titan Tank Ryan, but still not looking super great for Lovnest in the center. Not looking super great. But not that land match just decides to fire off another volley there. Air Recon's again here from Lovnest. In the south here, Pantafel trying to put 40 versus Jason Katsa. Closing on Metsu 3 though, and the ace level there. Can't push back. Highly damaged. Down to one third of health total. Pantafel moving up here. Good shot there in the south. We got Punio against the Sappers. Shot fights. Titan lands a decent hit on the gun just directly, but actually doesn't harm the crew. Fascinatingly enough. Southeast Sappers line the Punio. Pantaforming forts here. Further falling back here. Fort Chiefs and Cuts. A Comet. Chroming forts. Pantafor. They're close to the east level here. Heavily damaged. Actually, wow. They actually bounced quite a few shots there. I was expecting to get heavily damaged, but it didn't. Lucky Love Nest. Lucky Love Nest. Land matches flying off again here. Another hail of rockets. Hail storm. Some points left for Loveness. Panther 4 very close to the east level. Trenches here from Chiefs and Kutzer. 
section in Norfords. And another Pioneer Square for Lovens, again quite crucial. He has a fair amount of armor, including a rather chunky Tiger tank, and that will definitely require enough Pioneers to repair if he wants to repair fast enough. Tiger tank gets an easy penetrating hit from the 6 pointer gun, punching through the armor there. Another penetrating hit here. And for flanking in here, going for the kill for Deutsch and almost got it here. Though clearly also a bit hesitant to charge in here with the Panther 4. This does give the anti-tank and time track to respond to the Panther 4 here. We get to set a Blitzkrieg and smoke to get out of there. Yeah, both of the uh, Lovner's have tanks now heavily damaged. We've of course got the tanks being repaired. we got self-repairs and we got sappers there hard at work here. So Chiefs and Cutting get both tanks moving roughly at the same time. Meanwhile, 25 pounder guns are slamming the center here with high explosive shells. In the south, the Panther 4 pushed back the commandos. But Ace Little Panther 4 is definitely a powerful on the battlefield, of course. Chief Sun Carter does have an Ace Cromwell. I think he'll scoff at either. Comet sitting out there. Once more for the British Empire. And that Panther is going to be deep top of there. Go shot, bounce though. Very lucky again for Lovelace. We've got the Cromwell up here against the machine. we got the pack on the flank here. And again, it's the Ace Pack. Almost got here. we got Emergency War Speed. And of course, what is regular War Speed then? Anyways, smoke deployed here. Got to find a white phosphorus grenade and a shell at it. But no, didn't need to, I guess. Oh, I took out Lovelace's Ace Panther. I mean, he's done just one time tank again versus the Comet and the Ace Cromwell. Suddenly, the situation for Loveness is again looking a bit rough, to put it gently. Side tanks being busy being repaired all the way up here. Fire slate from anything. Of course, if Chief Sir Cutter were to discover this, he could probably just rush it down with his tanks and destroy it, which would be quite horrific for Loveness. Smoke deployed again. Again, nice use of the smoke shield ability there by Chief Sir Cutter. Thumbs up to that. Uses the support zone troops, but also, like, you know, blind enemy anti tank crews effectively. Sharp play there. Grenades off here. The light gammon bomb. And then of course you got the infantry sections with the well, regular gammon bomb. Which was more meant for like anti-tank purposes. For those wondering what the real difference was. It's just basically the gammon bomb is sort of like you know, this group pouch. That could then be filled up with like explosives depending on what tag you need to take out. So it was sort of a neat thing there. I think it's probably used by the commandos. Not so much other troops. It was also worth noting e Picasso grenade, meaning it detonated an impact. Panther 4 there for Lovnest. Rocket strike down in the base here of the Germans. Hoping to get a few wipes and at least just put pressure on Lovnest. From north of Thai tank spotted. Again, it is crucially isolated, so... If Chisun Kata seizes upon this, it could really hurt Lovnest because Lovnest has got, like, no anti tank that's near it. No Panzers. Not even Gunnadiers for the Panther fires. He's also lost another Gunnadiers squad. So right now, I mean, Chief and Cuts really has a good opportunity to, like, deliver a crushing blow to Lovnest. Who's bringing in another Panther 4? Fortunately for Lovnest, though, Chief and Cuts is not going for this opportunity. This is very good for Lovnest. Of course, could also mean he's going to hit some wells for the target then it's neither. And just deflect heavy damage and losses on Lovnest that way. Which is obviously less good for Lovnest. And looks like here there's in fact exactly the opportunity here that Chiefs and Cuts has realized upon instead. Like, you know, okay, there's an isolated tiger, but that also means the other units are isolated from the tiger in return. And that's us the way that just Chiefs and Cuts decide to look at it upon instead. So thumbs up to that. We got 174 versus 136 here. Love this Celeste Victor Pony, no Chiefs and Cuts, but Chiefs and Cuts remains fairly fortified and again fairly geared up. Crucially, also, it's just a lot of anti tanks to puff with both sapper sections equipped with PX. You also got the six pounder gun plus the Comet and the Cromwell. So, this could get a bit ugly there for Lovelace very fast here. Good penetrating hit here. He's Cromwell there firing away. Coming in there against the Pack 40. White phosphorus shell this time around. Inflicting horrific burns on the pack crew there. South we've got the Piet and anti-tank grenades against the Panzer 4 there. Pretty much keeping that one on the fight here. Pack crew's almost wiped out. And again, that is an ace pack crew. 
Com going for the Panther on the southeast side. So wiped out. Bit of blow there to Chief Sun Carter, but if he takes out the Panther Ford, it's not going to be that bad anyways. Titus going for the Comet here. Looks like here, Chief Sun Carter might have slipped up a bit, but then again, could also be big to draw out the Tiger Tank in the end here. Got the Panther 4 here and there. Got 6 point up from the rear of the Panther 4 here. Using the Rapid Maneuver to allow the 6 point to catch up with the Tiger Tank. And there you go. Several shots to the rear there, inflicting intense damage to Love this Tiger Tank. And there you go. We got Hunt and Emergency Wall Speed here. Active for the Common Racing in there. Going for rear hits on the Tiger Tank here. Thumbs up to Chief Sun Carter. And with that, Love this Tiger Tank is abandoned and destroyed. A huge place to Love this. And with that, I think it is safe to say Love this has. Uh, pretty much lost this match. He's got next one from the left. He's got a pack crew and a machine gun versus an opponent with plenty of infantry, a tank, a rocket artillery, and the ability to call in more tanks. In fact, Chiefson Carter can easily call in another Comet right now, and Lovness could at most call in a Stug. So far, as shown herself to not be keen on that. So that does look a bit game over there. And I think at this point, Lovness has left the match. We're just waiting for the game to register this. Yes, indeed. There we go. And that'll be for this evening. So thank you all for joining. Oh, not evening, but for this video. So thank you all for joining. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Had some fun. Learned some things. You did follow the Twitch of subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow my Twitch channel if you want to, but subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like all that. Share, subscribe. You can also consider donating to the propaganda cast like we're doing, which is keep see, you know, supporting it. Link in the description for that. Or you're in the market for pure income. Think of the other link in the comments. Use the code stuk 3 g there. And I get a small part of the sale. They are roughly 15%. So that's a nice way to support me and get the game at the same time. So thank you all for joining in. And see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.